Hey y'all, I'm gonna do a little quick video about closing the cabin. It's always a confusing task. Never quite sure if you're doing it right. This will be a little YouTube video to make sure get everything tidied up and the cabin ready for the winter. So here's the list, the punch list basically of all the things to do when you close up. Gonna assume you guys know what to do about cleaning. You wanna vacuum, mop, clean all the bathrooms, all the sinks, the showers, the kitchen, all that good stuff. But we'll go through some of the items that I always like to do, purging the refrigerator and the pantry. Also how to put away all the items outside. Uh, we'll go through all that, putting up the shutters, handling the electrical panel, making sure the right things get turned off, the right things get left on, draining the pipes, hugely important, that's a big one. And then finishing, locking up under the cabin, making sure that's all um, locked up properly. Uh, finishing up inside the cabin, getting everything ready to lock up, taking the trash to the dump. Then high five, you did it. And the mandatory item is to cry when you leave and drive away. Boo-hoo. I always feel a little of a clamped when I leave the cabin. For closing up the cabin, Kenny had also done this pretty cool diagram. Some may find it confusing, but maybe that combined with the video will help you guide 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 you through it, all the, all the different pieces and what you got to do. Okay, the obvious thing is just to make sure that the cabin's uh, tidy and vacuumed and all that. The cabin's looking really good uh, today. Um, if there are ashes, you probably want to get those out. That's already been done, so that's cool. I usually pull the sheets off the bed and just put the comforter on top, and then that way, you know, whoever comes first when we open can put the sheets, can put clean sheets on all the beds. Okay, so the other thing you want to do here is purge anything in the refrigerator that is perishable or has an expiration date before next spring. So for example, here this is uh, Italian. Um, I checked the expiration date on this, which is December 2018. So this is going to go be poured out and then into the trash. Probably do the same thing with all these open jars of stuff. Um, usually mayo and stuff like that is probably okay, but we'll check the dates and purge anything. If there's any other perishable items in here, or if there's anything left frozen up in here, like meats, we usually throw that away just because you don't know if things might, um, if the electricity might be going out over the, over the winter. And then usually it's a nice gesture to kind of go through what's in the pantry and purge anything that has, same thing that has an expiration date past, say, next April or May, because um, that won't be usable anyway. Um, I've gone through most of this stuff and it all, all looks okay. Um, so there you go. There are some open jars of, uh, syrup and stuff that I'll check before we leave. Okay. The other thing is all the outside stuff needs to be emptied and put in the bunkhouse. Um, the trash obviously purged from the kitchen should go in the, um, big trash can. And then that bag should go down in the dumpster in the parking lot down at the bottom of the hill. But the barbecue should be emptied, trash can, a little laundry thing, and then the... Um, umbrellas will all go into the, into the bunk. Okay, so here's the other thing. If anyone's been using the hose here, this should be unhooked and then probably put into the closet here. Uh, any random stuff for the winter can be put in the closet here too. Um, the umbrellas really don't fit in there, so we normally don't do that, but anything else can be put so in. So usually with the table out here, we just kind of tip it over into its side and leave it out here, but not up in the upright position. That way it won't get broken by any snow and uh, should survive the winter just fine. It's been doing that way for 30 years. Okay, so when the bunkhouse is all ready to go, it looks something like this inside. <laughs> all the shutters are usually left here leaning up against the back of the bunkhouse. Pretty self-explanatory, which goes to which um, window. Um, the big ones there in front, those go to the kitchen windows. Um, most of the others go to the bunkhouse. And the big ones go to either the front door or the back door. Um, pretty self-explanatory. If you're opening the cabin, you can just go in the reverse, take them off, and then put them over in this spot uh, for the person who closes up in the fall. There are two bunkhouse shutters. One's bigger than the other. The little one on the right goes here on the window to the bathroom. That may change in the future because I know we're talking about expanding the bunkhouse, but for now, that's the way it goes. The larger one here goes on that window there to the left of the front. Okay, door. so as part of putting the bunkhouse shutters on, these screens have to come off. You do that by going inside the bunkhouse. This is the bathroom window. 
open the window, which Bill's going to do right now. <clears throat> and then there's a little hook at the bottom, which he'll unhook. And then this guy pops off and can then be stored back inside the can then be stored back inside the bunkhouse on the bathroom floor. Same thing with the one by the door. The screen comes off and now you're um, okay to put the, put the shutter. Okay, so same thing over here. I noticed that um, this screen is missing a little hook on it, but once they go inside, they pretty much will stay in place. So same thing, screen comes off, Bill, so open that window, unhook it, and then we'll put the shutter on and hook that from the inside and then the screen just comes inside. These are the two kitchen window shutters. They're both the same size, so it doesn't matter which one goes on first. Usually I put one on here and then kind of slide it over into place. Um, these little pieces that are sticking out hold the shutters up. They used to have like a ridge on them, but they've broken off, so just be careful that it doesn't just, you know, fall down, but that's usually okay, how so getting this guy on. Gonna slide it over. Got one going on. This one was a little easier. Don't have to risk your life, pumping. life and limb. Okay. Okay. So here are the uh, main cabin shutters. These are pretty straightforward. They just sort of fold into place. So if you look here, there's a hook. This guy just comes unhooked. Uh, yeah. Push it. There you go. That one comes unhooked. Same thing over here. This one just sort of props up against, and then you fold them in together. Tuck, tuck this one. There you go. Perfect. Oh. Wonderful. All right. Cool. Here are the back shutters. They work the same way. So unhook it here. Unhook it here. And just fold them into place, and then hook these guys on below. Same thing on this side. Pretty straightforward. This is the back door shutter. This can go on pretty much any time you're ready to not be coming in and out of the back door. It's more narrow, as you can see, you know, just you'll see it, it's pretty apparent once you come. Okay, so here's out. the back door shutter. Um, basically, the trickiest part is you have to sort of lift it up and set it into these little, behind these little hinges at the bottom. You'll know which part of the door is the top because they have these same little, um, locking mechanisms at the top into these little guys here. So. Bill's going to demonstrate here. So that lift up the bottom, Bill, so those pieces go in. There you go. Shift it a little bit to your right. There you go. Now get it lined up with these guys up at the top. It'll just fit right in. Beauteous. Okay, so now for the fun part, we're gonna shut the water off. This is probably the hardest part of the job. It's not necessarily hard, it's just getting it right. So the first thing you wanna do is shut the pump off. So that shuts off any pressure, and then immediately you also wanna shut off the water heater, which is here. Okay, so those two things should be done at the same time. Before heading down underneath the, the cabin. Those are the first two things. You got the pump, and the water heater, and then the rest of the plugs, all this other stuff will be shut off except a, full, a few of them right as you're departing from the cabin. Good job, it's entering into the uh, cobweb and dirt infested dungeon here where the plumbing is. All the way through this first section. Okay, so this is the weirdest and the dirtiest part of this job is you gotta reach down into this hole and sometimes you have to push a little dirt away. You can see right here, there's, there's this orange lever right here. And what you want to do is just turn this so that, so that this bad boy opens and then you'll hear immediately that the the water start coming out of the, the pressure tank. So that's it. In the spring when it's open you got to find that same lever and then put it back in the position that comes this way away from the wall. That's, that's to shut it off. To open it you want it to be this way as the pipe flows out and goes out the out Okay, the front. there is a valve on this, but you never touch it. It always stays in this open position. So no need to do anything here. This is at the bottom of what's called the pressure tank. And as the water flows out of the pressure tank, you can see the pressure's dropping or will drop pretty quickly. Then you keep moving your way back this way 
towards the water heater, which is the thing. Now at the we're back. at the water heater, and you can always tell when the valve is closed because it's in the perpendicular position. When you go parallel to the pipe, this is going to now allow the. Uh, you can hear it bubbling out. The water heater is going to empty and going to flow out through this pipe to the outside. Okay, so these are all in the open position right now. Um, all these pipes need to be flushed. These two here can be opened right away. These are the main drainage pipes, this one and this one. Okay, so now you're draining all the water out of all the pipes. These two here go to the bunkhouse. We wanna let this drain and then ultimately we're gonna to wanna to shut these so that no flow inadvertently goes to the bunkhouse if someone comes up and uses the main cabin in the winter. This one can just stay in the open position. Okay, so now this may seem counterintuitive, but you basically want to open up all the faucets just a little bit, every single one of them. So I've already loaded this up. That was kind of a foul because now I've got to reach back in there and do that for the spigots that feed the washer dryer. Opening up now all the kitchen. This is going to help. You can hear the water bubbling out there. This is going to help empty all the pipes. Now, if you're opening the cabin in the spring, you're going to want to make sure that... Um, you close some of these back up because the minute you turn on the pressure tank and the pump, then water is going to start to flow. So it'll flow everywhere where you have these faucets open. Okay, same thing in the bathroom. I'm going to open these guys up. You can hear the water running out. Okay, so then same thing in the shower. You want to open these guys up. You can hear the water flushing out which is a good thing. So this part of the video didn't quite get captured right. So I'm doing a voiceover of this repeating clip. This is where you wanna flush the toilet tank, getting all the water out of the tank. Then you wanna plunge the water out of the bowl, then put a little bit of antifreeze into both the tank up top and also into the bowl so it doesn't freeze. And then you wanna do the same thing out in the bunkhouse to that toilet. Okay, so flush and plunge. Okay, so these two valves are really important. These are the two pipes, hot and cold water, which run out to the bunkhouse. Um, really, really important not to shut these until um, the bunkhouse water has been completely drained. Reason being, if you shut these too soon, before all the water is out of the bunkhouse, then um, the water will remain in the pipes and then they can break. And that's what happened last winter. So now, um, that the water's been drained, you want to go ahead and shut them off. That way, if anybody happens to come up during the winter, they can turn on the water to the main cabin, but it won't go out to the bunkhouse, which is ideally what you want, because that's going to be covered in snow. So basically now, this can go like this, and this can go like this. Now, this one here is probably the trickiest of all of them, because, you know, it's a little counterintuitive, because it appears here to be parallel to the pipe, which you might think means it's open, but actually it's closed because the pipe comes like this and then does um, a 90 degree. So it's perpendicular to my finger, which now means this bad boy is closed. So if you were to turn on the water now, it would send water to the, all the uh, cabin, main cabin, but not, not to the bunkhouse. Okay, one last important thing is this light switch, which is important only if you happen to come up during the winter and use the, the cabin during the winter. You always want this switch to be on. This is the a switch that controls this light, that light, and also all the heating elements. That's what these guys are that heat the pipe through these heat strips, okay? So if that switch isn't on, um, you would risk potentially the pipes freezing during the winter. So for now, I'm gonna flip this off and that's gonna shut off all the lights out here. And even during the winter when you're here, it's a good idea to leave these two lights on. Um, they do both have pull strings. The reason you want to leave them on is it does generate a little heat, particularly the one closest to me, it's a heat lamp, and that keeps usually the temperature underneath the cabin above freezing. So if you're coming up here during the winter, remember this light switch on and leave these lights on burning pretty much 24 seven until you depart again and then you're good, okay? Okay, there's no light switch for these guys, so these you just pull the you just pull the plugs, pull the strings on this one, and this one. I am talking about this is in the open position, usually where it is all summer, and then that's the locking position. And just make sure you have your keys with you, 
when you walk out below. I've done that before. And then close this guy for the winter. Not to be opened again until the spring. If you want, you can do this, not really necessary. Okay, we're pretty much done and ready to go. Um, all these other lights or these um, switches can now go off. What we typically leave running is the refrigerator, which is, has tape over it. And then we've typically always left the lights on that say plugs. All right, so you can see this one is a plugs, this one is a plugs, and I guess that's it. No and that's just, that. um, no, the refrigerator's on only, right? The rest of it, the stove, the guest house, the kitchen heater plug, the living room heater, all these can go off. The only ones you leave on are the two plugs, which one is for the plugs in the living room for like night lights and stuff, and the other is for the kitchen uh, refrigerator. That's always, those are always on. Close her up. Okay, last couple things here, just to make sure everything's locked up. Lock up the closet. By the way, this has a different key, at least at the moment, than the main cabin. So even if you have a cabin key that you bring with you, you're gonna need the keys from the lockbox um, near the front door to get into here, which is always important, especially when you open the cabin and if you wanna use the washer and dryer. Okay, one of the last remaining items here, a couple doors need to be shuttered up. This is the bunkhouse, so this just is usually clipped onto here. You take this off. It's a bit dilapidated, but this just shuts like so, and then it clicks over to there, and that is it on the bunkhouse. It's shut up for the winter. Ah, one last thing. Make sure that the uh, keys go back in the lockbox. Don't want to walk away with <laughs> yes. this. That's a big one. That's a big Four, zero. Six, seven, eight, four, zero. Bingo. Got that? For all you who can, I can like being can never remember it. This is one of the shutters for the doors. That'll go on the front. You can tell because it's the wider of the two. So Bill's going to take that on around front. Bill, you don't put that on though until we're out of the cabin. It's the very last thing. Okay. Last but not least is the front door shutter. This is the trickiest. So you got to kind of slide behind that post, Bill, it's close to the house. Also, good to make sure that the top is up at this point. You don't want to have. To flip it around and the red paint is on the outside and this works just like that back door you want to put that into those little levers this one's not as important because you really don't get much snow accumulation here because you got the cover on top this one's usually a little bit easier to get set good over on that side bill All right, awesome. I feel like uh, Bob Bia and his guy, uh, his <laughs> guy on the on the TV show. Okay, hopefully at this point you've got all the trash out of the house. All the bad stuff has been purged from the refrigerator. All we got is this last piece of trash bag. We're gonna take this with us in the truck and dump it down. Hey, we did it. See ya. Closed for the winter.